Hello again. We are graphing quadratic functions. Basically what we're doing is we're going to work with equations that look like this, y equals x squared, but it can even become as more complicated and detailed as y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Basically stuff that we were factoring previously is what we are going to be working with in graphing. We're actually going to put a picture of what it looks like. And if uh, this term, this a term, or the number in front of x is positive, then it looks like this, like a, a U. And if it's positive, it's happy. See? A big smiley face. If the number in front of the X is negative, or there's a negative in front of that X squared, then the U is sad. That's what I always use. If you're negative, you look like that. If you're positive, you look like that. Now, the best way to start by graphing is to start with its parent function, basically where everything starts from. Uh, y equals X squared. And I can show you how to do it, but we're going to look at how it works first. Now we're going to create a table. Now what's interesting about a table for a, a quadratic function is that your middle term should be your vertex. Now let me just explain this really quickly. If there is no bx term, see there is an x squared term, but if there is no bx term, then your vertex or your middle value is always zero for x. If there's a bx term, which we'll work on a little bit later, then I'll show you how to find your middle term, but not at this point, not just yet. So let's just assume, well, we're not going to assume there is no b, so you don't have to assume anything. So our x, or I'm sorry, our middle term for x is going to be 0, and we're just going to go whole numbers to the right and whole numbers to the left. We're going to create ourselves a table. That's basically what we do. Now, there is no negative in front of here, so it's going to be a happy little... Uh, parabola, that's what you call it. Quadratic function is also known as a parabola. So that's exactly how we should expect our graph to look like. Now you have to substitute in. And sometimes students have difficulty substituting in because they don't put it in their calculator correctly. I say don't put it into your calculator, use this. But if you need to put it into your calculator, what you should do is this. Parenthesis, whatever you're putting in, close parenthesis, square. When you don't do that, your graph isn't going to look like a U, it's going to look like a um, I guess a straight line like this, and then students don't understand what they did wrong. So when I substitute in 0 squared, 0 times 0 is 0, 1 times 1 is 1, 2 times 2 is 4, negative 1 times negative 1, or negative 1 squared is 1, and negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. As long as the distances correspond correctly or are equivalent, on both sides, the y values will be the same. See, since this is one away on both sides, it'll be one and one. If it's two away on both sides, then the y values will be. Ooh, I made a mistake. Pardon, that was four. Then the y values will be the same. I guess I'm glad I checked that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a graph. So it's 0, 0, and there you go, it's going to look kind of like a U. Now some people are going to say, oh no, it's a V. No, it's not. A V is an absolute value. This is more rounded. You know, these, these areas are rounded, so it's going to be a U, or at least look like a U, a parabola. Now, a few things that you have to realize. The highest or the lowest point of a parabola is called the, now this happens to be the lowest, it's called a vertex. If it was upside down and it went downwards, then the highest point of the graph would be a vertex. Uh, whenever it hits the x-axis, that's considered a one of three words that people usually use. making sure if my border was good enough. Root, solution, or x-intercept, where it hits the x-axis. Root, solution, or x-intercept. And uh, if you want to cut this graph in half, you cut it in half right in the middle. And that's called the axis of symmetry. Which I'm going to abbreviate. Basically, the axis of symmetry is where you cut something in half. If you want to make me perfectly symmetric, or at least as symmetric as I can be, cut me right in half, 
I have two arms on both sides, two legs on both sides, two ears, two eyes, etc. So the axis of symmetry is where you cut it in half. But the funny thing is, the axis of symmetry and the vertex are always the same thing. So the axis of symmetry, I'm sorry, the vertex is at 0, 0 on this particular graph, and the axis of symmetry is at x equals 0, the line x equals 0. Now there's a couple other things I have to talk about, because we haven't mentioned this in a while. What's the domain and what's the range? Well, I'll use D and R for domain and range. The domain is the x values that I can use, and I can use x values all the way to negative infinity. My graph is going to go like this, but it's still going to extend this way. My graph will extend like this forever too. So my domain is from negative infinity to infinity. My range is my y values. It does include the number zero. That's the lowest point. And it goes all the way up forever and ever. So it goes all the way up to infinity. It's a basic understanding of a parent function of a quadratic function of a parabola. We're going to deal more with what happens when you start adding some aspects into it, uh, which I think are pretty fascinating, and we'll see how it goes. With that said, take it easy for now. Goodbye.